Hey guys, this is Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist. Just wanted to do a sequel to the mass acne video that I released in April, shortly after the mandate of wearing your mask went into effect and it's, that video has done very well. Over 20,000 views, just super uh, touched by all of your support regarding that video. I really wanted to reach out to the healthcare workers, the frontliners who are wearing a tight N95 mask all day long and I've definitely done that in clinic and it really puts a toll on your face, on your facial skin. It's a very traumatizing seal. And if you're wearing that all day and you're just barely taking it down to take a sip of water, that's a very tough situation to be in for your skin. And so this video is for the general public. Thank you for waiting for this video. I wanted to take some time to collect information from my patients in the last eight months. It's been exactly eight months since I started this channel and I've been collecting the info from my patients as well as polling people on Instagram. And the way I would categorize mask acne now is there's dry, irritated acne or even contact dermatitis and they're very oily and you're getting just the regular old increased sebum bacteria causing inflammation of your pores leading to mask acne, masne. So I would say we gotta break those two up make it two separate issues. I'll cover both very quickly during this video, but that's the way I would categorize it after eight months of clinical uh, work with my patients and trying to find a solution for my patients who are doing a great job wearing their masks, wearing their masks to the visits. Thank you for very much for, for doing that. Let's go through the dry skin routine. So if you're having dry skin, I would recommend a cleanser like Cetaphil or CeraVe Hydrating cleanser. Those two are great for dry sensitive skin. Cetaphil Gentle Skin Cleanser, very affordable. CeraVe, hard to find, always sold out. Try to get one of those and you can cleanse your face one to two times a day. In the morning you could cleanse your face and then put some kind of moisturizer on. Whether it's, I've been liking Vichy Mini, Mineral 89, very nice hyaluronic acid based serum that you could put on that won't affect the seal of your mask. Uh, and it will help with irritated skin, hydrate your skin, and this is actually my second bottle I'm going through. The other thing that you could consider, l mds Barrier Renewal Complex or their AM-PM Therapy. The Barrier Renewal Complex is always on my uh, bathroom counter because it has nice moisturizing ingredients. It has dimethicone, it has ceramides, it has hyaluronic acid and it has our favorite of the year niacinamide vitamin b3 that is anti-inflammatory will calm down the inflammation from the trauma of your mask or if you're just getting dry irritated um, uh, skin from the mask also look at the mask material you um, might be irritated to the mask material i've had patients who've come in who've gotten allergic contact dermatitis from the materials in the mask whether it's a, a, a cloth mask if it's a medical grade mask, people have had really bad irritation. The best, softest material is silk, least allergenic, less friction, less trauma to the face, but you have to be careful about the, the filtration efficiency. Uh, it is, it is a, a subpar uh, filtration efficiency with just one layer of silk, so you have to look for a multi-layered uh, silk mask. I have never purchased a silk face mask, but uh, you know, try to look up online. And if you, please leave a, a comment down below if you found a good brand uh, of face mask with multi layers. Elta MD though, great moisturizer to apply. You don't have to necessarily go for both. Like put this on first and then this. I would just do one or the other, save some money there. If you are worried about really rubbing on your face uh, the mask, especially if you're wearing N95 mask you can consider Aquaphor or Vaseline. Petroleum jelly, petrolatum based uh, ointments are very effective in soothing skin. If you have like a, a, a crack in the corner of your lip, you have chapped lips that are causing little cuts on your lip, irritation from a retinoid. Aquaphor is all over my house. So I have baby size, medium size, big brother. Then I got papa size, big bombucha or do people outside of Hawaii say bombucha? <laughs> Never mind. this is the big bombucha. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see what's inside. 
Anyways, the big jumbo size here that is nice to have next to your crib where you wanna change diapers, use this as a barrier cream. This is nice in a diaper bag, on the go. This is good just to kind of irritate your wife and just have that all over the house where you could have it in the drawers and it gets lost there for five years. I like having it in the car uh, so I can put this on my kids' lips when they're very chapped. Um, but anyways, this is, uh, you know, Aquaphor is very nice. The difference between this and Vaseline is that Vaseline's high grade filtration of petroleum jelly, petroleum ointment, just purely that. I, I don't want you worrying about the safety of it. Aquaphor, another great brand that's reliable like Vaseline, but this has moisturizing ingredients like glycerin, has lanolin in it. So for those of you who have lanolin sensitivity or allergies to it, just be aware of that this has lanolin. And if you do have that, go to Vaseline instead of Aquaphor. All right, but use that. Don't worry about it being comedogenic. You know, Marilyn Monroe was a fan of Vaseline. Uh, Zendaya is a, a big supporter of Aquaphor and she uses it as a beauty hack to get that little glow to her skin. Uh, so do that at the end of the day when you're taking off your mask, cleanse with a gentle cleanser like Cetaphil or CeraVe and then get the Vaseline on your face to help with any uh, irritation so it soothes the skin, helps heal any wounds that you may have picked up, and then it traps in moisture. Oh darn, this thing is cracked. Shucks. Uh, anyways, sad. Uh, going to the oily skin side of things now. Uh, this is very, this is where I see most of it. Most people are getting oily and you wanna degrease the face, especially after a day of wearing your mask. I know for any, either way of dry skin or oily skin, but especially for oily skin, wash your mask regularly. If you could change out your mask daily, that's ideal. Not always gonna happen, but in terms of uh, the bacteria component of it, you don't wanna introduce more bacteria into your pores, into the infundibular openings that cause acne. I'm seeing a lot of lower face acne. That's usually the hormonal distribution for women, but we're seeing it for across the board. It's, it's also irritating people with rosacea. People with rosacea have very sensitive skin. It's either dry and irritated, or they're getting the acne rosacea as well with some pustules or acne bumps that don't come to a head and patients are like, I'm too old for acne. That's acne rosacea, okay? So to treat it, you have acne rosacea. I would probably try to do the dry skin care routine as much as possible because you, some of these medicated things can be irritating to your rosacea even further. So stay with real gentle, less is more for uh, acne rosacea and then see your dermatologist for any prescription medicines that are gentle for you to use with the mask. It's just purely, uh, acne from wearing the mask or acne is worsening with the mask, I would say wash your face. Uh, you can use a salicylic acid cleanser. I've, I've in the past recommended La Roche-Posay's 2% salicylic acid or Neutrogena's. Neutrogena does have the most burn, I feel. This one though has been very gentle for my patients. It has niacinamide, bingo, uh, ceramides also has vitamin D in it for antioxidant benefits which is interesting the other thing you can consider but it's really hard to find is CeraVe's benzoyl peroxide cleanser I love this creamy cleanser is 4% benzoyl peroxide so low enough to not cause irritation but high enough to be effective in decreasing the bacterial overload on your face so I actually wash my face mostly with a benzoyl peroxide cleanser at the end of the day this one also has ceramides and niacinamide like its sister salicylic acid. Those are things you could consider once a day. I wouldn't go twice a day. You could do this either in the morning or at night. Um, I do this at night when I come home from work and I wash my face and my body with it. And I, uh, it does go through the tube a little faster when you wash your body, but I like to do this on for my body if I do a workout to keep body acne away. People are worried that, oh, I thought you're not supposed to put benzoyl peroxide with a retinoid. And that brings us to our next point. At the end of the day, you'd use a retinoid. But let's back up, let's back up. Okay, so start your day off with a cleanser, either a gentle cleanser, or if you are really oily, you can start off with, say, salicylic acid wash. Then you're gonna put some sunscreen on. Like For either one, you're gonna put sunscreen on. You can put on uh, dermatology or La Roche-Posay, 
Uh, they have zinc oxide in, uh, in them, which is anti-inflammatory. It's a great ingredient for diaper rashes. So you can put that on before putting on your mask. This Dermatology or, uh, or Elta MD UV Clear has niacinamide in it, which is anti-inflammatory, helps with acne. So that's something you can consider whether you have dry skin or the oily skin. End of the day, take your mask down. I wash my face with a benzoyl peroxide cleanser. And then I'll eat dinner, and then after a few hours and your face is dry, then you can consider at bedtime a retinoid. So I, I use a prescription retinoid, and I can talk about my prescription retinoid later, Alpha Ret by Skin Better Science. But La Roche-Posay or Differin are two over-the-counter retinoids you could consider for acne treatment. This contains adapalene gel, 0.1%, whereas prescription adapalene is 0.3%. That's where you have to come to me and I'll prescribe that to you. If you want something over the counter, this is probably the most economical price-wise. It is, if you break it down per fluid ounce or grams, this is a 45 gram tube here. Versus different at first sight may seem cheaper, but it's a much smaller tube than this. This is like a topical steroid tube, uh, 45 gram tube for sure. So it's like a toothpaste size tube, okay? So that's something you would apply pea size amount to your entire face. I usually don't recommend retinoids as a spot treatment because it's more of a preventative measure and it keeps your pores clean. So I would consider doing it at bedtime because, so that the sunlight doesn't deactivate it and use a pea size amount to your entire face. Then you go to bed. If this is irritating, you could put a moisturizer over it like Elta MD's Barrier Renewal Complex, okay, with niacinamide. <laughs> Okay, so real quick, dry skin, use a gentle cleanser, less is more. Use things with niacinamide to help calm down the inflammation. Use Cetaphil and CeraVe cleansers. You can moisturize with say Vichy's, with Vichy's Mineral 89 with hyaluronic acid. You could use Aquaphor to soothe your skin and then wait a few minutes and then you could apply your uh, sunscreen over your aquaphor and then put your mask on and your, your sunscreen could have zinc oxide in it to be anti-inflammatory. Um, you uh, Don't wear makeup under your mask as well. We don't want any occlusion uh, under your mask and pushing makeup in to occlude your, your pores further. Um, the question is, do you put this over um, sunscreen or not? I would say maybe put your sunscreen uh, last but say if you forget i don't think it's gonna be the end of the world to put this over your sunscreen too um, but I, uh, sunscreen in my regimen is always last and apply your mask over after waiting 10 to 12 minutes and then at the end of the day wash your face again and then uh, to remove all the impurities and debris from the day and then you can follow up with something like aquaphor and then uh, in terms of the oily skin side of things, cleanse, your cleansers, will, your cleansers will be this once a day or your benzoyl peroxide wash once a day. And then you're gonna incorporate a retinoid if you want to. If you're not pregnant, you could incorporate a retinoid. Uh, remember to wash your mask, avoid makeup under your mask. Find a, a mask material that works for you well, that is still functional in terms of filtration. Hopefully this was a nice follow-up to the last uh, video. Uh, now that we know more, really excited about this vaccine coming out and I can do another video just on vaccinations. I know some of you might say stay in your lane, but as a physician, as a medical doctor, I feel uh, inclined to talk about this because it's very important for the public to know about, um, especially as we wanna get out of this pandemic, okay? So please be safe guys, take care and thanks for watching. Please like the video, please share with your friends and please subscribe to the channel. Peace. Mm -hmm.